Boys and girls, today's story is called Fish Don't Need Snorkels. Happy Sabbath and enjoy the story! Does a fish need a snorkel to breathe underwater? No! God gave the fish gills to breathe underwater. Does a giraffe need a ladder to reach the top of a tree? No! God gave the giraffe a long neck to reach the top of the tree. Does a turtle need to search for a house to live in? No! God gave the turtle a shell to live in. Does a mountain goat need a trampoline to jump over the rocks? No! God gave the mountain goat strong legs to jump over the rocks. Does an elephant need a straw to drink from the river? No, God gave the elephant a long trunk to drink from the river. Does a bird need a hang glider to fly across the sky? No, God gave the bird wings to fly across the sky. Do you have wings or gills or a shell? Or a trunk? No! God made you in His image and He loves you just the way you are. from the book of Genesis, chapter 28, verse 20 through to 22, and I'm reading from the King James Version. 
And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me, and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, truly we are your servants. In you we live, move and have our being. We offer you our thanksgiving and call on your name. We love you because you hear us and respond in graciousness, compassion and righteousness. You deliver our souls from death, our feet from stumbling and our eyes from tears. Accept our tithes and offering, we pray. Multiply it so that your work and word may go forth. Amen. Good day, beloved. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Always a great privilege and, of course, a huge responsibility to share God's message to His dear people. So you pray with me. Lord, I'm about to preach your word. Grant me the wisdom to speak your word with clearness, faithfulness, authority, passion, wisdom, humility, and freedom. And may Jesus Christ alone be exalted as His word is explained. Please fill us now with your spirit and with your presence. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, our scripture reading is found in Philippians 3 verse 10, and it reads as follows. In the Christian Standard Bible, my goal, Paul is speaking, is to know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings being conformed to His death. The title of our message today is, Do You Know Jesus Christ in His Resurrection and His Sufferings? You know, we live in a world where most believe that knowledge is power and that success depends upon how much a person knows. Some agree that knowledge is power only when it changes your life. They believe knowledge applied is knowledge used, which obviously means knowledge not applied is useless. In our text this morning, beloved, we note how Paul's goal is to know Jesus Christ experientially. 
Paul finds himself in a Roman prison when he writes these words. And in verse 1 of chapter 3, he tells the Philippians to be joyful in their union with the Lord. A theme that is found all over in this letter. Is it not strange that someone could be in jail and talks about being joyful in the Lord and talks about that God is all that I pursue? You know, I met some Christians, especially now in this coronavirus pandemic, that as soon as they went through struggles and hardships, they complain all the time and sometimes they don't want to do anything with God as long as things go well. They will talk about him. But here we find a man whose joy is not dependent upon his circumstances, beloved, whether good or bad, because his joy comes from the Lord. Please note that this is not Paul's prayer as an unconverted man that he may know Christ and so be saved. No, beloved, this is the desire of a man who wrote more than half of the New Testament letters. Hence, the purpose of this message is to reveal that it is only the converted person who can feel the desire continuously that I may know him. And this knowledge is based upon experience. Paul had experience had an experience with Jesus, beloved, after his Damascus Road encounter with Christ. Do you and I have a personal experience with Christ? Or do we only know facts and statements about Christ? Or do we know Him personally? Of course, beloved, we come to know Him in the first instance through the medium of statements about Him. And we come to know Him primarily through His Word. But then, beyond the revelation of His Word, must come a deep longing to have a daily personal experience with the living Word, Jesus Christ. You know, knowing God is not a religious exercise, friends, but a personal commitment. You know because you have lived it and felt it. It involves the heart more than the head. This is the knowledge that the Apostle is speaking of that he seeks after in regard to Christ. You know, there are thousands of people, even professed Christians, that they believe they know Jesus Christ, or so they profess they know Him, but to whom He has never been anything more than a historical figure. They never allowed Christ to be their strength in their weakness, their comforter in sorrow, their life in death. Yes, they all in all. And so Paul begins by saying, My goal is to know Him. You know, beloved, the word know in our memory text translates the Greek word gnosko. And it means to understand, to perceive, or to be aware of through observation, inquiry, or information. It is a Jewish idiom speaking of intimacy between a husband and a wife. The knowledge here in the text spoken of is a personal knowledge gained not by hearing or reading, but by direct personal communion with the Lord. It is not theoretical, but experimental. In other words, Paul had experienced Christ's power in his life. Do you and I experience Christ's power daily in our lives, friends? Now remember, when Paul wrote this letter to the Philippians church, he had been walking with Christ for many years. He had preached Christ to others. Yet, he was not 
comfortable. His heart's cry was to know Christ more intimately and personally. He never wanted a second-hand experience uh, with Christ. You know, people, I, I met people, they love to listen, listen to YouTube sermons and go to church, but they have never opened the Bible for themselves. They want other people to feed them, to serve them, but they never go and make special time with God alone, that special communion with God. Paul wanted to know Christ for himself. And I believe there are young people listening to me now who only know Christ of what their parents told them and what they have heard in church or in school about him. And that is very good if parents teach our children about God, but they do not have a personal experience with Christ. Parents, encourage your children to, to, to let Jesus into their hearts, to make a personal commitment with Christ. The question, parents, do we have a personal experience with Christ daily? Paul says, I want to know Him personal more and more for myself. Beloved, this also tells me that Paul doesn't think that he had arrived because he had walked with God for so many years. He didn't have a holier-than-thou attitude. You know, I met some people who think that they know it all. They listen to many sermons over the years, preach many sermon over, sermons over the years, read many books, knows the writings of Ellen G. White, and now they concluded no one can tell them anything. You know, seven Adventists, we are called the people of the book. But we must be careful that we don't become arrogant and full of pride because we know a lot about God. To have a lot of information about God does not necessarily mean you know Him personally. You know, you can, you can become a good preacher who love and know the Word, but who do not love and know the living Word, Christ. Hence the question to you and I today. Do you know Jesus Christ, my friend, personally? Paul goes on by saying, and the power of his resurrection. Now this word power refers to the Greek word dunamis, which is the special, miraculous, divine power that only God possessed. Paul believed firstly, that this power causes Christ to be resurrected from the death. Secondly, he believed that everything we stand for and hope for is contained in Christ's resurrection. If there was no resurrection, then our worship and faith would be in vain. His resurrection confirms the truth of the Christian religion. All the other religions in the world cannot hold to this claim. Christ arose from the death and now his death dispels the darkness that was around the grave and shows us that our great interest are in the future world. And so when we fully believe that Christ has risen from the death, it will produce a sure hope that we also shall be raised and will enable us to bear trials for His sake. Thirdly, the resurrection is treated by Paul as having power for our justification, meaning that God declares us just because we believe salvation is only attained through Christ in what He has done for us at the cross. Fourthly, Christ's resurrection has the power of raising us from the death of sin and bringing us into a new life 
of the Spirit. If we feel death in our Christian walk, His resurrection power can raise us and inspire our spirits to raise into new heights with Him. If we feel sick in our bodies, beloved, because of His resurrection power, we can be healed and experience life and life abundantly. Maybe your marriage is going through something. I believe God has the power to raise it. Maybe your finance is taking a dip. I believe our God has the power to raise it. Maybe your children are far from God. God can raise them and bring them back to Him because by His resurrection, Christ overcame death defeated the forces of evil and obtained righteousness for us. Fifthly, beloved, His resurrection confirms that we do not have to fear death anymore because 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 54 and 55 says, But we know when this perishable will have put on the imperishable and this mortal will have put on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, because in His resurrection, hallelujah, we have the assurance of God's redeeming purpose. His resurrection became a reality of our future immortality and provides us with the opportunity to walk in newness of life. Then Paul says, and the fellowship of his sufferings. Oh, beloved, although Paul experienced much suffering in his daily life, he still desires to know Christ more in his suffering. Why? Because he knew no other human being has experienced such bitterness and suffering as Christ endures for us. He believed that to suffer for Christ is to suffer with Christ and in it. He found and teaches us to have the strength to endure and patience to outlast any suffering that may come upon us as Christians. I know a lot of us don't like the idea of suffering, but I believe that our sufferings bring us closer to our Lord. It helps us to be identified with Him, not just in His victory, but also in His suffering. Many times I have heard testimonies of people on how Jesus became so real to them during the times of suffering. I have sat at the bedside of Christians who had cancer and was in a lot of pain, but they had the faith to encourage me and strengthen my faith because their suffering had brought them closer to the Lord. Paul is saying, beloved, I want my circumstances and my body to become the means whereby Jesus Christ is made great. You see, many are willing to reign with Christ, but they are not willing to suffer with Him. Many would be willing to wear a crown of glory like Christ, but not the crown of thorns. Many would be willing to put on the robes of splendor, which will be worn in heaven, but not the scarlet robe of hatred by unbelievers. In other words, they want the communion but not the conflict. They want to come to the sanctuary, but don't want to participate in the struggle. They love to worship together, but don't want to do the work of Christ. Oh, beloved, this was not the feeling 
of Paul. He counted everything that he gained before as rubbish. The idea is that it is an honor to suffer as Christ suffered and that the true converted Christian will esteem it a privilege to be made just like him, not only in glory, but also in trial. To do this is one evidence of faithfulness. And we may ask ourselves, therefore, whether these are the feelings of our hearts. If so, it is evident that we love Him. If not so, and we are merely seeking the crown of glory, friends, we should then doubt whether we have ever known Christ Jesus personally. Do you really know Jesus Christ? Because it will take divine strength to suffer like Him. You will have to know Him in His suffering to suffer just like Him. If you really know Him, you will understand and testify with Paul and myself today that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Romans 8 verse 18. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. And character, hope. We also know that pure gold put in the fire comes out of it proved pure. And genuine faith put through this suffering comes out proved genuine. And beloved, when Jesus wraps this all up, it's your faith. Not your gold, not your money, not your talents that God will have on display as evidence of his victory. Do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you say Christ's sufferings that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed so if you are suffering in a manner that pleases God keep on doing what is right and trust your lives to the God who created you for he will never fail you yes friends it is not God's purpose that we should suffer we know all of this is a result of sin but we also know hallelujah that it is only the suffering God who can truly understand our suffering and praise the Lord, He will bring an end at due time, an end to our suffering. As long as we cling to Him, as long as we stay connected to Him, we will be fine, friends. He will, he will have us in His hands. Christ will acknowledge our faith if we are to go through pain and suffering. Remember, he stood upright when Stephen was stoned because he honors his children who are willing to suffer and die for him. Do you only want the, the fellowship in the, church, in the church communion, the fellowship, or do you also want the fellowship when it, it's not so good, friends? Paul says, I want the fellowship even in his suffering. You know, in a time when we are being threatened by an invisible enemy in the coronavirus, we do not have to fear. Because if we truly know Christ Jesus, we will also know that not even sickness or death, any principality, any, any demon, life, death, tough lives, nothing will separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. Because to know Him, is to love him and perfect love cast out all fear then lastly paul says being conformed to his death you know the words being conformed or to conform translates the greek word susegmatiso and implies a continual progress with a real inner conformity it is to conform oneself to another's pattern the reference being conformed to his death 
is not the impending death of martyrdom, but to, die, but to the dying unto self. Paul seeks the spirit of Christ, his humility, his devotion, and his unselfishness. I believe Paul wants to die to the world of sin and temptation so he can be fully transformed in order to be like Christ. Are we willing to die every day of sin and temptation, friends? Because to know Christ means we are becoming like Him. Also, in the victory over sin and temptation, to know Him means we are transformed inwardly by becoming humble and meek like Christ. Hence the question today, do you know Jesus Christ personally? Or do you just know a lot of things about Him? Do you have a knowledge of the Word but do not know the living Word Jesus Christ? Do we study the Word of God and the writings of Ellen G. White just to boast and brag about our knowledge of God and to argue with people? Or do we truly use this knowledge to lead others to Christ? Because the world does not focus so much on what you know and confess, but on how you relate to people. The Pharisees, remember, also thought they knew God. But Jesus told them, you study the scriptures because you think that in them you find eternal life. But these scriptures speak about me and you don't know me. Peter also said he knew Christ, but then he betrayed Christ three times. Yes, he knew Christ, but not deep, not intimate, not personal. It was only after his upper room experience where he and the other disciples had to pray and lay their differences aside that the Holy Spirit could fill them and they were changed forever. Maybe you also know Christ but are not willing currently to suffer and die for his namesake because you do not have a daily upper room experience with Christ. So Brother Rudy, how do I come to truly know Christ? We have discussed in this message, it is to know Him in the power of His resurrection, in the fellowship of His suffering, and to be conformed to His death. But allow me to close and to add that this also comes with earnest praying and asking the Holy Spirit to fill our lives daily. We need to make unhurried time with God, friends. A quick reading of the Word and a quick prayer in the morning and in the afternoon will not cause us to know God personally. We must be willing to have daily communion with Christ by studying and meditating in His Word. Meditation is important because it is the activity of calling to mind and applying to oneself the various things that one knows about the works and purposes and promises of God. Becoming more like Christ is a process. And in that process of sanctification, you need to be firstly be consistent. It cannot be on and off. You cannot meet obstacles and give up. Secondly, you also need to be intentional. It does not happen by chance. You need to seek Him with your whole heart and then you will find Him. And then, of course, you need to be committed to the process. There is no success when you are not committed to the process. So our starting point of knowing Christ is learning who Jesus really is. Yes, we have received Him as Lord and Savior. But as Paul desired, we also must long to know Him more and more. Because when we truly know Him, we will be able to sing with the songwriter. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love Him more and more. Jesus saves and keeps me and He is the one I'm waiting for. Every day with Jesus is sweeter 
than the day before. Yes, friends, every day is not filled with roses. Every day is not all happy and excited. But every day with Jesus makes the journey easier. When we spend time knowing Christ, we grow deep roots that helps us to stand firm in times of trouble. We will become strong disciples because we understand who He is and what He can do. We are willing to suffer with Christ because He is the suffering servant who took our sins upon Him. We are willing to suffer with Christ because we know to gain everything and not have Christ is to lose everything. Oh, beloved, but to lose everything and gain Christ is to have everything. We are willing to die for His namesake because He died in our place. But we praise God for early Sunday morning that Christ arose from the death. And because He loves, we can face tomorrow. Because He loves, all fear is gone. Because I know He holds the future and life is worth the living just. Because he loves. God is looking for Christians who amid a dreadful pandemic can still sing praises of joy to the Lord like Paul and Silas did in prison. Who can still testify that God is good and faithful because they know their God personally. Hence the purpose of this message was to reveal that it is only the converted person who can feel the desire continuously that I may know him. Do you and I experience a daily conversion? Do we know Jesus Christ personally? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for allowing us to listen to your word today. Our desire is not just to know things about you, but to know you personally in your resurrection and in your sufferings, just to become more like Christ. Help us to surrender all to you that we might experience an intimate relationship with you. Lord, we know that your word declare that we will go through a time of tribulation before you return. Help us now to get closer to you because it's only when we know you personally, filled with the Spirit daily, a hunger and a desperate after your word, after your Spirit, that we will be able to stand. Bless us now, for we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.